The explanations from police as to why it took them so long to actually engage with the shooter in the Uvalde mass shooting, it's been ever evolving. And none of the explanations have been good. But what we're about to show you might be among the worst. Take a look at this. But don't current the best practices, Lieutenant, call for officers to disable a shooter as quickly as possible, regardless of how many officers are actually on site. Correct, the active shooter situation, you want to stop the killing, you want to preserve life. But also, one thing that, of course, the American people need to understand is that officers are making entry into this building. Uh, they do not know where the gunman is. Uh, they are hearing gunshots, they are they are receiving gunshots. At that point, if they, if they proceeded any further, not knowing where this suspect was at, um, they could have been shot, they could have been killed. And at that point, that gunman would have the opportunity to kill other people inside that school. Okay, so what was added in that interview was that the reason they didn't want to move in was because they were worried about being shot. He just said I, it. I think we all understood that going in. I don't think that we needed that to be made explicit. Yes, you could be shot. Yes, you could be killed. On some level, that is an understandable fear. It's also a nature of the job that all of these people signed up for and have been provided body armor for and weapons and training. And when you have so many of them, the expectation is that someone is supposed to move past those natural fears. That might stop someone like me from rushing in, but it's your obligation. And by the way, that's the explanation that was given, but is that the real reason they didn't go in? I don't know, they've been saying all sorts of things over the past day. We're gonna catch you up a little bit. First of all, understand if you're just joining the story, that people were justifiably angry that parents had to wait outside for what felt like more than an hour before they finally moved in. The number keep, keeps going up. Yesterday it was 40 minutes between when he went into the school and when the cops finally engaged with him. Now apparently the best estimate is 78 minutes. And during that time fired more than 100 rounds. During that period you had kids calling in and we're gonna return to that. But one of the things that they admitted today was that they did make the wrong decision in not moving in faster. But there's a reason they made that decision. And I want to read this for you. Law enforcement said that they acknowledged that it was the wrong decision. They said that they had a barricaded hostage situation, okay? They didn't think it was an active shooter situation anymore. It was a barricaded hostage situation. So there's no reason to rush it, no reason to move in. No one else is at risk. Okay, that's what they said. They said they were convinced that there was no more threat to the children and that the subject was barricaded and that they had time to organize with the proper equipment to go in. That's what they said. There's no reason to go in, no one's at risk. A correspondent for the New York Times has compiled just a list of the calls 911 received from kids in that schoolroom during the time that they were waiting outside. And I want you to look at those. So many student calls saying that people are dead, saying that people have been shot. Additional shots being heard on the call. The fact that the shooter is still firing his gun seems to go against the idea that there's no additional risk. And this is just a, a negotiating uh, situation at this point. So I, look, I don't know, maybe by now they've already dispensed with this excuse and they've moved on from the, oh sure, mistakes were made, but we thought we were just gonna be negotiating with this guy. When you look at the actual facts, the facts that were already publicly available by the time this new excuse was trotted out, it, it just makes a mockery of the entire thing. Why anyone would believe official statements from the police makes no sense to me. Okay, so look, the police have been lying our entire lives about everything. Oh, we never abuse black people. And the minute we get smartphones, you see hundreds of cases instantly. You think they popped up at the same time as smartphones? No, they've been doing it all along. And they did it even after we saw it, right? And they say, oh, we never did it, we never did it. And and why does why do we even have this absurd idea that cops don't lie? Because the media, the media tells you all the time, cops never lie. Are you insane, have you ever met a cop? Okay, I mean, look at him. And so this one is so over the top that even Tucker Carlson and Brian Kilmeade on Fox News are like, no, they're obviously lying. Even they have to admit it, right? So look, so Sasha Baron Cohen goes out there and says, well, they could have been killed. Okay, he looks like that, I know. It's just a, a tiny bit of levity here in this uh, tragedy. You know you were okay, about it so, uh, so he, he goes out there and he's like, well, the cops could have been killed. Oh my God, you don't say. It's like the fire department saying, well, if we rushed into a burning building, we could have been killed. Yeah, that's your goddamn job. And the fire department never says that. But the cops say it all the time. In fact, I'm gonna show you a clip of what I said yesterday. At the time, what people were outraged by this. 
It became like a little bit of a national news story. Like how could he say this? And then right after I said this, that, that dude came out and said, well, come on. We could have been killed, not the kids, who cares? I, us, the more important valuable people could have been killed. So this is what I said yesterday. You know how there's a cab, all cops are bastards. Uh, I don't know that that's true, um, and we've talked about that in the past. But I'm going with ACAC, all cops are cowards. It's not because they're born cowards, it's not that they're not, they're less courageous than the average person. No, they go into the police academy and they're taught cowardice. They're taught, you are more important than the citizens. Cops will openly say, we gotta protect ourselves first. Well, then you're a coward and you've been, and it, you weren't born that way. You were taught, you must be a coward. And guys, that's why Borat on national TV says without missing a beat, yeah, of course we didn't go in, we could have been killed. Because he thinks that's normal, why does he think that's normal? Just like I told you yesterday, it's because they're trained that your lives are more important than the citizens. Your lives are more important than kids lives. Why would you risk your precious life as a cop to save other people's kids? And I say other people's kids because the cops rushed in to save their kids, then came back out and did not go back in to save the other kids. I mean, it is the picture of cowardice. This is exactly why when people are calling to defund the police, the response where people say things will become so unsafe for us if we defund the police, it's just not true because time and again, we see cases go before the Supreme Court that uphold this principle that the police don't actually have a duty to protect the citizens unless they're in government custody. And a lot of people have said, well, public schools, that's a government facility, government funding makes it operate, government staff are what you know, the teachers teaching the kids, uh, but that's not considered government custody. It's only jails, prisons, and mental institutions. So the cops have no duty to protect the citizens. So what are they there for is my question. They're not making us more safe. They're criminalizing a lot of behavior that many of us mm -hmm. don't consider criminal, right? It's not hurting anyone else. We see time and again racial pro policing leading to people getting charges for disorderly conduct, which is entirely up to the cops discretion. So they're over policing certain communities, not making them more safe, oftentimes shooting members of the community because they say that their own lives are in danger. But we saw exactly how police act when their lives are in danger. They didn't even go near the guy with the gun. Uh, so it's pretty clear how police act in those situations. And it's time to have a real conversation about defunding the police. Because if yeah. they're not there to make us more safe or protect us, what are they there for? Yeah, and I just wanna be clear. Look, they, there's two different problems in runaway crime. One is some of the laws that have been passed that basically give you no consequences for breaking the law. And we're fair and reasonable on all that. We tell you exactly what the issues are, right? But the second problem never gets discussed. The cops hardly ever respond to calls. Like, so, like, and they will literally say, ah, what's the point? We're gonna bring him in, and then at some point he's gonna be released. So, I mean, there was a guy who went, there was, we didn't cover it on the show, but here in LA, guy goes and starts masturbating in front of a nail salon for 40 minutes. Cops never show up. They get called, like, the guy, publicly, publicly, what are you guys? Nope. No, you know why? Because they wanted to wait till he was gone, because they didn't want to bother dealing with him. All cops are lazy and everybody knows that. Have you ever been inside a police department and tried to report a crime? I've done it many times, like two out of three times. They're like, "Oh, come on, you want me to fill out paperwork? No, nah. go inside a police department. You'll think the DMV is like the most efficient thing you've ever seen in your life. Mm -hmm. they, like, they're like in moving molasses, they're so slow because they've been trained, don't do any work. You might get a, a paper cut or a hangnail, don't. Do any work, go inside a police station, you know it, you know it. Then we did a story two weeks ago, the LA cops doing catching Pokemon. And the funny thing is they get fired because other cops asked for support and they didn't go. And they were instead, what they were planning to do was go join the other cops at the local 7-Eleven. None of the other cops got fired, they're hanging out at 7-Eleven, is their job. Oh, Being a cop is so tough, no it's not, the world's easiest job. You have no risk at all. The minute any risk pops up, you murder it or you run away from it. And all you do is sit and eat donuts. So if you did your job, maybe funding makes sense. But if you're doing no job at all, 
and you want us to give you more funding for your lazy asses and for you to train cops to sit there and let other people die because they're so goddamn precious, then no, your job's not at all easy. It's preposterously easy and heartless. Do your goddamn jobs, protect the citizens. Uh, my final thought, I'm gonna come at it from a slightly different angle. Um, Cuz as I said in my intro, uh, I in that situation, I'd be scared to go in. Except the guy's got an AR-15. It's like going up against any soldier in any military in the world. So like th this is my appeal to the cops of the world. So if you are, if you think ahead to being in that situation, how terrified you would be, why aren't you on our side in banning those weapons? If the weapons are so terrifying that 19 cops are scared to break into a room because one person has one of those weapons, why aren't you on our side advocating for them to be banned? Why are you at least passively, if not actively encouraging the next mass shooter to have a weapon that leaves you paralyzed? That you can't conceive of going up against it. And by the way, I don't want you to go up against it. I want you to be dealing with criminals that are less well equipped than you. That, that don't have the capacity to gun down a dozen cops at one point. And I, I think a lot of cops would be angry at me for even bringing this up. The idea that I don't think that these gunmen should have uh, ammunition that can penetrate your body armor. I don't think that they should have magazines with such a capacity that they can go up against an entire group of cops. That they can mow down an entire uh, room of kids without having to reload. Why aren't cops allies in trying to ban the things that leave them terrified? Yeah, I'm sorry, I've gotta add two last things here because Yes, John is right. I hope to God I would be brave enough to go into that building, but I'm not sure. I'm sure you're all not sure, right? But I am sure that somebody was brave enough to do that, and that's Angelie Rose Gomez. Mm -hmm. So she's the one that was yelling at the cops to go in, and instead they tried to arrest her and they handcuffed her. Luckily, she got out of the handcuffs from a, through a friend. She rushed into the building and grabbed her own kids and came out with no weapons. See, that's courage, that's a hero. By the way, the cops also lying about a monumentally important part of the story. We've been asking for a couple of days on the air. I'm like, wait, he barricaded himself in one room. Then how did uh, Angelie Rose Gomez get her uh, kids out? And then we heard other parents rushed in and got their kids out. And, and, an, and an off duty cop helped a friend get his kids out. So how are they getting the kids out if the cops, uh, if the shooter is barricaded in one room and it's a hostage negotiation? First of all, there's no negotiation. As one of our viewer members just pointed out, the, the guy got so bored, he must have been wondering to shoot her. Like, are, aren't the cops ever gonna come in? And Jessica pointed out during the break, yeah, he put on music. He must have gotten bored. And it turns out, no, there were kids in four different rooms. So they could have saved so many of the kids. While the shooter was in one room, they could have saved the kids from the three other rooms. Not only are they totally cowardly, they're also unbelievable liars. Look, as a general rule, if a cop is talking, he's lying. It's a rebuttable presumption. It's possible that it's a rare situation where a cop doesn't lie. Okay, I'm willing to hear that out, okay? But your general rule should, assumption should be, especially about a situation they're involved in, they're definitely lying to protect themselves because we know they never do their job. So if they're telling you they did their job and they did it right, that is very, very unlikely. Last thing to prove my case to about how they don't care about anybody else but themselves. Do you know that it's standard policy across the country that if a police shoot someone and they're bleeding out, they don't get the medical attention right away. The first thing they do is handcuff them. And then they wait for medics to potentially arrive. And we've done countless stories of people dying while handcuffed because the cops won't treat them. How could it be a danger if you've already shot the guy and you've handcuffed him? And you think, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna give him help anyway. Well, if that ain't the def definition of a coward, I don't know what is. Yeah, for some forward facing, just to end this with, some forward facing dialogue, I would point to a lot of communities forming these groups of members of the community who will respond to calls of you know domestic abuse, mental health problems, issues of poverty. This is happening in Atlanta right now where you can call 311 
And it's true that many police officers don't live in the communities that they serve. So who went into the school? It was members of the community whose children were in the school. They loved the people in the school enough to protect them. And so we need people serving and protecting the community who actually love the community enough to protect it. It's very clear the police do not. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.